wish I knew. I wish I knew you wanted me. Do I wish do? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, what do you do? I hope that all is well with you guys. I know it's been like a little mini, so I'm excited to be here. Today, I'm gonna get straight into it. I'm gonna be discussing five things that I wish I knew before becoming a flight attendant, or should I just say five things that could potentially steer people away from the job. First and foremost, I just wanna say that I definitely love my job. I couldn't see myself doing anything else right now. Um, but of course, every job, every career comes with, you know, some little things that you wish you could tweak, you know what I'm saying? You're never just gonna have the full package at any job that you go to. But the good thing about these little hiccups is I'm gonna be giving you some tips um, that you can use to combat these five little like stipulations i guess is, is that does that fit um i feel like it fits so i'll go ahead and like and subscribe at the end of this video if you're feeling the vibes and comment down below let me know if any of these are like a deal breaker for you without further ado let's get into it the first thing that i wish i knew before becoming a flight attendant is that the starting pay is low when i'm just scrolling on flight attendant tiktok i noticed that a lot of new flight attendants um are highly upset when they come to the realization that you are not making a lot of money at this job starting off and not only is the starting pay low but you may actually be spending more than you're making the first few months especially if you commute and if you're on reserve now of course this does depend on your specific airline salary how much you're actually flying if you're commuting back and forth to base especially there's a few things that you have to budget out number one of course is going to be your crash pad expense your monthly crash pad expense the second thing that you have to expense is transportation to and from the airport i've had so many crash pad roommates in chicago and dallas tell me that the uber prices was just taking them out especially during peak hours y'all they can get super expensive third thing that you have to expense is food of course if you can't cook at your crash pad then you're gonna be buying a lot of airport food that adds up you gotta factor in food for your layover so if you don't meal prep then that door dash and stuff is gonna add up so when you put all of this stuff together it can wipe out your check really fast so i usually see a lot of new flight attendants being released to line and being upset because they weren't aware of these different budgets and honestly it's like not even their fault because when you go to training let me tell you the only thing they care about is safety protocols y'all they all they want to know is can you use this aed like they're not teaching you nothing about no budget no nothing i would highly recommend that as soon as you start even thinking about becoming a flight attendant you need to start saving your money because even if your airline does pay you for training it's probably not a crazy amount so you got to think about the first four to eight weeks that's little to no income off bat and we all know the bills don't stop for nothing so you have to start budgeting accordingly before you even leave for training so what are some other things that you can do to make sure that your account isn't in the negative when you start this job okay so boom before i started this job i probably watched every single youtube video on being a flight attendant okay i read every single article on google i looked up potential expenses what the pay is like woo -da -woo -da -woo. so i pretty much went into this knowing like like I'm definitely about to take a pay cut so let me budget accordingly Some tips that I have to just save bread overall number one you're gonna want to save as much money that you can while on your current job the second tip that I have is to find out your training pay and if they don't pay for training then they might provide meals you know breakfast lunch and dinner so find out what it is with that the third tip that i have if it's possible you guys i would highly recommend living in your base that will cut your expenses in half you don't have to worry about finding crash pads finding hotels um there are a few airlines that are like pay for a couple nights for you at the hotel like i know one pays for like you know eight nights a month or something like that which helps a lot but a lot of them don't pay for your commuting expenses so you're on your own with that I remember my crash pad in chicago was 350 the one in dallas was 300 um, but it could be a lot more it could be cheaper or a lot more expensive depending on like what you're looking for and also what city you're in because i know usually like if the cost of living is higher then the crash pad is gonna be higher so that's what i'm saying like if you live in base then you don't have to worry about paying your crash pad rent on top of 
paying your rent or your mortgage back home. The fourth tip I have is to cut transportation costs by finding a crash pad that provides transportation to and from the airport. Or I would say bring your car if you can, like if that makes sense, because them 40 and 50 dollar Ubers are gonna make you sick. Chicago, I say right off the train, which was perfect for me. You know, I would recommend taking public transportation if you can. And my airline, they even gave us like a 50% off discount, so we didn't even have to pay full price for public transportation. Then in Dallas, of course, I had my car, so I was able to cut that expense. The fifth tip that I have is gonna be to meal prep. When I was looking around at crash pads, one of my non-negotiables was that my crash pad had to have a kitchen. I wanted to be able to cook. I wanted to be able to meal prep. Eating in the airport and just eating out in general all the time gets really old really fast um, and it adds up. And then the last tip that I have to have some extra bread is to pick up trips or get a second job. A lot of people fly over 100 hours a month to make the extra bread, but I'm not gonna lie, you eventually gonna get tired and burnt out. But up and down, up and down, even just like commuting back and forth to the airport can get really tiring. So I know a lot of people will go hard for like two to three months go in like 125 and then they chill for one month and then they repeat if you don't want to be in the air like that then i would recommend you getting another source of income i've actually flown with a good amount of servers bartenders bottle girls just because it's quick like you get your money at the end of the night you don't got to worry about waiting on another check you can also start a little side business you guys if you have a little side gig if it's anything that you know how to do then use the flexibility of this job and started if i was actually consistent with this channel there would be no reason for me to pick up trips or get a side job y'all like i'm literally robbing myself at this point then i'd be thinking like god bless me with this platform for a reason i need to start using it so i'm working on that y'all we gonna get there but yeah definitely if you want some more bread pick you up some trips or get a second job get a side gig and then of course just remember at the end of the day this job is all about seniority so the longer you stick it out the better your checks will become really after the first year and when i got a line is when i started to see a noticeable difference on my checks bottom line is people take this job because they love to do it and not necessarily because of pay you can't travel the world and get you a nice voluptuous check all at the beginning like it don't work that way you gotta put your time in but you'll get there y'all i promise and then speaking of traveling the world that brings me to the second thing that i wish i knew before becoming a flight attendant um this job is not all glitz and glam this is for my people that's looking to become a flight attendant so they can strictly be outside okay period this job is glorified as being able to travel all over the world and see different cities but that's not necessarily always the case so there's a couple different factors to take in the first one being especially as a new flight attendant you are going to be on a budget so a lot of the times you'll probably be in your room eating your meal prep yeah the second factor is that your layovers aren't always going to be long enough to explore like when you're on minimum rest 10 11 hours literally all you have time to do is sleep the third factor depending on the airline you are not always going to be flying to the sexiest destinations okay you're gonna be real upset when crew scheduling keep calling you to work rosalia kansas or somewhere like that and this is especially true for those regional airlines that fly to smaller airports so if you're really taking this job to travel then i would highly recommend going with the main line if you can and one thing that i love about my airline is that we only fly to mostly major cities so i can find something to do no matter where i am like we don't fly to them little cities with a population of 200 and then the fourth factor to consider is that you may end up flying to a lot of the same places y'all know what's crazy i flew a lot more places on reserve than i do now having a line once you get a line you kind of start to fly to a lot of the same places so i would say definitely recommend um bidding for different cities with long layovers when you can now with all that being said the best solution that i have to actually travel while on the job is to use your flight benefits flight attendants can fly domestically on standby for free so anywhere in the u.s um pretty much on any airline depending on who your airline has contracts with personally when i'm flying standby i just like to fly my own airline because them other major airlines be having like 40 people on standby and i don't have time so i do like to fly my own airline that way i have some seniority and the standby lists aren't super long but if need be i would definitely take another airline you know if my airline don't have no flights going out or if they don't fly to a specific destination then that's when i'll use somebody else as for international travel it's the same thing um you can fly standby with any any airline but you do have to pay the taxes on the ticket so for example last year I flew to Cancun on my birthday it was $87 round trip 
all bags included so yeah definitely take advantage of the benefits it could definitely be a little hard to take time off and vacation while on reserve but if you know how to move your schedule around then it's doable because i was definitely on reserve when i went to cancun all right y'all so the third thing that i wish i knew before becoming a flight attendant is that this job can actually get lonely this usually starts off in training for a lot of people you know it requires you to be away from your people from like four to eight weeks and a lot of people this is their first time being away from home being away from their people like that so a lot of people get homesick but it also prepares you for the job because it's like if you're not working like turns every single day then it's going to require you to be away from your family for a couple days out the week every week maybe even longer if you commute and you're on reserve once you get a line of course it gets easier because you can build your schedule and fly as little or as much as you want i think it's really important to ask yourself beforehand like am i able to be away from my people for long periods of time you know am i able to miss holidays birthdays major events and also have that conversation with your family especially your spouse and your small children talk about what your schedule is going to look like because everybody can't handle being away from their family for long periods of time now there are plenty of married flight attendants you guys with whole families small children included it really just depends on your individual situation everybody relationship is different so you just have to communicate now in order to combat this loneliness not only should you be texting and calling your people back home but also hang out with your crew members on your layovers guys especially on the holidays I told y'all that I have been flying chaser position for like the last three months and although I love being by myself like too much isolation is not good you guys so come may i ended up bidding for a main pairing line and when i told y'all i flew with some of the sweetest ladies that month oh we all ended up getting like the same line we switched out of a few trips but we ended up keeping like three trips together and i remember the first time we went out on our layover we went to cracker barrel and my heart was just so warm i was like oh, i miss this y'all i miss civilization <laughs> so yeah definitely when you can hang out with your crew don't just be a slam clicker y'all and then I promise once you get a line, like you can fly as little or as much as you desire. All right, so the fourth thing that I wish I knew before becoming a flight attendant, you guys, reserve life is tough. And it's actually why a lot of flight attendants end up quitting within the first six months of this job. Reserve life is nothing to be played with, okay? And crew scheduling gonna try you at least once, minimum one time, which is why it's so important to know your contract. But yeah, when you're on reserve, you gotta think you have zero control over your schedule um you're getting overworked or you're not getting worked enough depending on that you might be a little broke lonely away from family you're staying in crash pads that may not be ideal your body is adjusting to being up and down up and down so with all of these factors i can see why you know a lot of people don't make it but i'm here to tell you that it gets better all you have to do is endure until you get a line with my airline it took me exactly a year to get a line but a couple months ago it was people coming straight out of training getting a line so it's always funny to me when i tell people what airline i work for and they're like oh like you know what well, do you plan on going to another main line or woo -doo -woo -doo -woo? absolutely not because i know that with those other major airlines becomes a lot longer time on reserve okay y'all i'm back sorry my camera died but anyways what i was saying now don't get me wrong everybody's been hiring um especially last year um it was pretty much non-stop so it might not be like you know 10 15 20 years like it used to be i have a friend that works for united and she started probably a couple months after me in 2022 and she's based in houston and she says she's pretty close to getting in line so like i said it might not be as long now but yeah i plan on staying right where i am unless the lord calls me somewhere else but for now i'm good I'm green crew scheduling might attempt to get you to do some wild things that's why it's so important to know your contract um but also be respectful one thing i will always be sure to do is to talk to them like nice and sweet not only because that's just my personality but also because i feel like maybe they wouldn't try me like they would come correct you know if i'm nice and sweet so but even then sometimes they could be a little pushy so all you got to do is pull out your contract and say okay um according to chapter 2.12 whatever whoop, the, whoop, the whoop. um it would be illegal for me to work this trip it would be illegal for me to do this do that you know what i'm saying you got to know your contract it's all in your tone though so like jeva jeva once you finally get a line you're gonna be so happy that you waited you guys that's when the job gets really good and that's when the pay gets pretty good too okay so last but not least the fifth thing that i wish i knew before becoming a flight attendant is that it is really tough on your body when you first become a flight attendant your body is going to be adjusting to going up and down so much 
research all the different altitudes so it's really important that you guys take vitamins i'm telling you all this but i definitely don't but i definitely need to start you guys you need to take vitamins because i'm literally getting over a cold right now you guys and it's like back before this job i would have a cold uh maybe for like four or five days then i would be good but i notice now when i get sick it takes me like at least a week to fully recover so taking vitamins is going to be very very important for your immune system eat healthy when you can work out when you can that's another thing like I still don't really have like a set workout schedule like that like sometimes I'll work out twice a week sometimes I'll work out four to five times a week it's really just whenever I could get it in because you got to think like sometimes you're just on minimum rest and then you'll skip the gym sometimes you have a super long layover um, depending on what time you land to like it's just kind of it's still hard for me I guess to build that workout schedule but I'm not giving up on it y'all and like I said if I just work out once a week then that's what i got in for the week but i try to go you know at least at least twice so yeah it's gonna be important to keep your body active and then another thing i noticed when i first started like i was getting a whole bunch of random bruises especially on my legs so i was like i don't know if that was from the carts or from like running into the um the chairs or something like i don't know but i was bruising really easily so it's just little things like that like you really have to make sure that your health is good when you're carrying your luggage throughout the airport make sure that you're carrying it the correct way and also make sure that it's not too heavy and also most airlines tell you not to put up passengers bags like by yourself like you can help them or you can like you know aim it in the right direction that it needs to go but if you get hurt that's on you they will not pay for your medical bills if you get injured while putting up a passenger's bag so sometimes you know you just gotta go by you pack it you stack it let them know you know i'll guide it in with you but you know if it ain't no strong man around hey <laughs> so that's pretty much all that i have for this video you guys five things that i wish i knew before becoming a flight attendant but i hope and pray that this does not completely deter you from the job y'all because like i said a lot of this just takes time you know what i'm saying it takes time for the job to get good and then once it's good like you really not gonna want no other job like you really not gonna want to go back to a desk nothing like that y'all comment down below if you have any additional questions over the five things that i went over in this video um be sure to like and subscribe if y'all feeling the vibes i love y'all so much and i'm gonna see y'all next week for sure